I'm going to share with you a video this morning that was actually created by a very talented group of students from Eastville School in Illinois. Now these students were given a challenge by their teacher Paul Hart. While studying the Civil War, they wondered why Key West remained a Union stronghold. In order to find out, lots of research was necessary. The results were three video segments full of research, characterization, and creative fun. Welcome back to the day before tomorrow. Thank you for starting off the day with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer, Jr. Cayo Hueso is the original Spanish name for the island of Key West. So in 1763, when Great Britain took control of Florida, the community of Spaniards and Native Americans were moved to Havana. The island was home to fishermen from Cuba and the British Bahamas. When the United States became a nation in 1776, Americans also came to Key West. Spain decided it was time to sell Key West. And now, the day before tomorrow. Juan Pablo Salas. In 1850s, the Spanish governor in Havana, Cuba, gave me the title to own the land that is today called Key West. After the territory of Florida was transferred to the United States, I couldn't wait to sell the island. I wanted it sold so badly that I did sell it. Twice. First, I traded my stoop boat to Juan Salas for the island. A value of about $575. I'm John W. Simonton. In 1821, I also bought the island of Cayo Hueso from Juan Silas while sitting in a cafe in Havana, Cuba for about 2,000 pesos. Quickly as I could, I sold the island to John Geddes. I'm General John Geddes. I was the former governor of South Carolina. I hurried as fast as I could to get all the paperwork approved so I could own Cayo Hueso before Mr. Symington. I am a businessman and had the aid of some influential friends in Washington, D.C. I was able to gain clear title to the island of Cayo Hueso. I wanted Key West because of my friend, John Whitehead. The day before tomorrow is a very special day. I feel that I could live it in a happy country. Tomorrow's so mysterious, I really can't see it. Things might be happening and life might be it. The day before tomorrow, that's quite a different thing. The time is right now, guess what life might bring? Day, your best day ever. I soon took on three northern partners. 
my friend John Whitehead, John Fleming, and Pardon Green. I had shared my experience in Key West with Mr. Simonton. At one time, I had been stranded in Key West after a shipwreck in 1819. I was so impressed that it had such a deep harbor and a 90 mile deep shipping lane. It had a great location too, in between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. On March 25th, 1822, I sailed the schooner, the USS Shark, to Key West. I physically jammed a United States flag in the sand, physically, and claimed the Keys as United States property. Perry reported to my husband that the pirates were out of control in the area and all over the Caribbean. Perry renamed Cayo Hueso. Now it would be named Thompson Island for my husband, Smith Thompson. I'm Commodore David Porter's daughter. My daddy was in charge of the United States Navy West Indies. He brought in an anti-pirate squadron. He took charge of Key West, which he ruled beyond his authority as a military dictator under martial law until the pirates were gone. He was a tough and rugged man. But the name Thompson's Island didn't stick. The people didn't care for it. It resumed as Kaiho, Hoiso, or Key West. In just eight years, Key West was sold, sold again, sold again, he seized with pirates, and then rescued by a military dictator. By 1828, Key West had been in Americans' hands for only five years. It was at that time that Key West and the small island chain around it seceded or broke away from the United States. The U.S. did not try to get the land back and left Cayo Hueso to reform as a small, unique country called the Conch Republic. But Key West had more land grabs ahead of itself, and besides that, a civil war was brewing. For the day before tomorrow, I'm Jenna Stauffer, Jr. Be sure to tune in next week to see another video created by this amazing group of 11-year-old students from Illinois. Thanks for tuning in this morning. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Take care, everyone. If I, I...